Hey guys, I decided to do an impromptu video today. We had a couple of uh, great video conversations this week. Um, me and uh, Melissa Clark, uh, counselor, got together. Um, well, she was the only one that joined for the first uh, group chat that I put out there, and that brought us together to do a counselor chat for people live in Facebook. Um, so if you missed that, uh, please go ahead and check through the video list. <laughs> I heard that some people have videos missing, so if it's not there, let me know. Or you can check on YouTube as well. It was a great conversation with Melissa, which is kind of prompting what I'm talking about today. Um, we also did a group chat yesterday, and I say we, because I facilitated one for the Cultivated Life community, and that is us. That is all the people who are cultivating life um, so that uh, we have nourished souls, that we are cultivating the life that we've been given us because we have the source of life with us. He is ever present with us. He is the giver of life and he does not want us to um, miss out on experiencing the fullness of the life that he has given us. And so um, today's topic, I'm talking about letting go of some things, specifically um, expectations and how they may be unrealistic, particularly in this time, as well as finding enjoyment. So one of the letting go of expectations, I decided to go ahead and go live today while my hair is, I just washed it. So um, I did take a little uh, time to do some exercise this morning and wash my hair, but I'm not fully done up. And I have a tendency to not do things that are helpful for me in productivity or in providing content because it's not perfect, it's not ready to go, everything's not situ situated just right. And that includes, um, doing makeup and all that kind of thing, which um, actually I can't do right now because it's bothering my eye. So um, I just wanted to encourage other people to consider ways that we might be holding on to something that was either the norm or um, things that we expect the way things will turn out while we're at home and um, taking care of families or those people who have to go to work and they're working extra hours and or different shifts. I have a couple of friends that have had total uh, changes in their shifts, the cut hours, but a reduction in pay and um, a lot of different things that we are going through and all of that is transition, it is change. And in that change, um, it's, it's our tendency to want to hold on to all the things that we knew before. And there's actually a loss involved in letting go of some of those things. So for example, um, parents who are home with small kids and now suddenly they're homeschooling. They are with the kids full time when they were out of the home for a while. They are, um, or maybe they're out of work. People are adjusting to those types of changes. Well, um, expecting your children to be um, fully in line on board with a homeschooling plan or the schooling plan that you have in mind more than likely is not going to line up with reality. And so there is a gap between the two, what actually is happening, um, where you're at today with ideals and goals that we have for how, how we want things to be. And in that gap, we need to take a look at consider things that is this actually something that I need to expect of myself or my kids or my family or other people right now? Um, is this even achievable and reasonable from where we are at today? Or is this something that is more of a long-term goal and so we need to look at it in the future ahead of us and we can take steps towards that. Um, but in the meantime, when we're not able to get the thing that we're trying to hold on to and that we maybe had before, even identifying that as a loss can be helpful. Um, it, it doesn't have to be this extenuous process, but just to say, man, I have some expectations of how much I can get done in a day and it's not happening and there's a gap there and that is a loss for me because it doesn't line up with what I want to happen, have happen and what I foresee as a possibility. Um, it just isn't that way. And maybe just allowing some of that emotion to surface, it may not even be very much, but just attending to it in even a small way can be really helpful. So what are some of the expectations that you might be um, holding on to that just don't, aren't going to fit for this season? Is it uh, something that has to do with um, uh, all the meals that are going to be prepped or uh, the meal uh, plans that you're going to have in place or um, 
certain chores in the house or maybe it's a combination of all these different things that just can't happen all at once especially when an entire family is adjusting um it's one thing for us to uh, pay attention to the things that we need to adjust to and change to but um also noticing what our children are adjusting to our our friends our uh, spouses our um roommates whoever it is that it may be still in proximity with us in our homes and even outside of our homes what are they adjusting to you know today I watched a video by uh, Beth McCord she is your Enneagram coach and um, one of the things that I love about her and the, the stuff that she puts out there in talking about the Enneagram the Enneagram is really just a tool it's a way to understand differences that are um, consistent in different personalities in ways that we respond to stress ways that we um, uh, hide our true selves and ways that we try to cope with different things and what she shared today was just kind of how different Enneagram types respond to uh, are responding to this crisis right now and I know there's a lot of memes and a lot of things that will make fun of that or we might take light uh, of doing like some fun assessment and just say oh well I'm this number I'm that number but here's the thing uh, what she pointed out is if people this set of tendencies, so that's like a number on an Enneagram, right? Then they tend to be more fearful. They may be more thinking about these types of things. These may be their concerns. Um, and so identifying that as a loved one and as a friend to, to be able to listen to it and say, hey, you know what? I recognize that this person is really going through every outcome, the worst case scenario, or this person is, is trying to or order their world and make sure that everything happens. That doesn't make them a bad person or you a bad person for the way that you're responding, but that we're able to let go of our expectations of how we think another person must respond and recognizing where they are actually at. And so again, it goes back to that difference that I was talking about, the gap between reality and what our ideal picture is or what we desire a goal to be in the future. Um, remember that it's where we're at today and a goal isn't the same place, right? So we're taking steps, we're moving towards something. Just as we are in relationship with other people, we can take an opportunity to recognize where they are at. And if it's not where we think they should be, the answer isn't in trying to fix them, right? We all know that doesn't work. We don't want people to come and fix us. But in um, offering a safe place for them to just simply express where they are actually at. And for ourselves, um, going back to what I was talking about originally, letting go of our own expectations, um, just identifying what does that look like? What am I expecting today to be where it actually is more realistic to think of as something either in the future or not realistic at all. So for example, you bring in everybody into the home and everybody has all these tasks all of a sudden, you have cleaning duties, you have childcare duties, you have uh, their schoolwork, your work, whatever it is, the combination that you have, um, and expecting that to be ordered or um, without strife, um, without conflict, and that things are running smoothly, isn't realistic to the reality that everybody faces this with a different filter and a different set of perspectives. And so just taking some deep breaths even and stepping back and saying, okay, where I'm at today is not where I wanna be. Where my kids are at, where my spouse is at, where my friends are at is not where I wish they were, but where are we today? Um, allow yourself some of that grief process for what is not um, where we're at, at where you wanna be and then continue to move forward. Take some small steps of what it does it look like to let go of some of those expectations. So for me, one was a small thing, but it just had to do with social media. And I talked about this with Melissa Clark, letting go of the perfectionist on the, the profile thing, um, having it look a certain way when somebody comes to my, like my timeline feed or whatever it's called on Instagram and it has it like a pattern or whatever, I'd let go of that. That was causing me stress. And that, that was something I thought of before all this. So today with, with my family here and and I am a social introvert, so, and I have do most of my work at home, so we haven't had as many changes as some people have, but still, I have expectations that my kids are suddenly going to um, start doing the dishes every day. <laughs> they, they weren't doing it before, but I can also help them in a step-by-step -step process. Um, so for myself, other things that I need to let go of personally in this time frame is recognizing that I'm not gonna have my quiet space by my 
house. They're not leaving the home, which is what I'm used to, and accepting that and moving into what I can do for today. Okay, so the second thing that I wanted to talk about was adding enjoyment. So letting go of some personal expectations. And I just encourage you to ask God to reveal what those are for you and what does that look like that you don't have to hold on to right now because it's actually hindering you and hindering your ability to relate to other people and your health and your stress levels. Okay, so the second thing, adding enjoyment. Um, I started posting some of the, the funny things on this page and I've always been a little bit hesitant because primarily I offer teaching content. I provide, um, I want to help share resources that are helpful for people in cultivating a life well lived and growing spiritually while growing emotionally healthy. Um, and, but part of that is actually having fun and enjoyment. So I'm going to be sharing some more of the, my fun thing, which is colored vintage glass. Uh, I love sea glass. I love just earth tone colors and those types of things and things that are funny. The laughter is, um, you know, some people are so good at it. Here's the thing. That wasn't a natural thing for me. Um, it's actually natural in that it's in me, but it hasn't been naturally expressed. It's actually been, um, what's the word kind of suppressed inside of me being able to enjoy things. And I didn't even realize it until I was in the midst of PTSD and depression and anxiety, and I went to, to my counselors and started EMDR therapy, which stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. In my first session with the counselor that I still see today, um, it was a powerful session where Jesus met me, and we were in, creating this safe place, and we're under this waterfall, and I he Jesus pulls me under the waterfall to... Uh, and I'm like, to play. He wanted to just play under the waterfall. And I actually, in my vision, I'm thinking, you're crazy. You tell me Jesus, he's crazy for pulling me under the waterfall to play. I had never seen Jesus as somebody who was fun that could I could have enjoyment with. And, um, and what was even more powerful for me after that was I was standing there in this. So in, in EMDR, they're kind of continually asking you, what do you notice? What do you notice? Like, what's the next thing? And I'm always asking God, show me something and just reveal where you're at. And um, I wanted it to be a moment where I could experience more of him. And this was one of those powerful, powerful moments. So we're standing underneath the water waterfall and I see Jesus like separate the water like he does with the Red Sea right and he pulls back the water like a curtain and on the other side of that curtain it was like it, this is gonna sound kind of crazy I know it's gonna sound kind of crazy but it's okay like fantasy it was unicorns and rainbows and butterflies and and all this fantastical stuff and it was overwhelming overstimulating it was unbelievable how much um, beauty and fun was out there. And I was overwhelmed. I was like, oh my gosh, shut it, shut it, shut the curtain. And so Jesus sh shuts the uh, waterfall curtain and he says to me, well, before he does, he says to me, in my vision, this is just what I sensed, I have created all of this for you to enjoy. And that word, enjoy, later, I... I thought, you know, at first I was actually like fighting internally if, if he was, if I was hearing the word delight in or enjoy. Um, so a little bit later in this EMDR session, I visioned that I was in this like the swimming pool in this uh, like creek area outside of the waterfall and um, swimming. And so the therapist brings up the word that's supposed to be a safe word for me, which I'm thinking is enjoy because that's what my, my little battle in the brain decides to pick up the word enjoy from what I think that Jesus has said to me. And when I said it, or when she brought it up, I had a panic attack. I just almost completely lost in the session. It was as if the stars in this, like it got dark. There were no stars in the sky. Everything was going pitch black. The water was overflowing in this little pool that I was at. The bottom dropped out and there was nothing I could do and everything was coming at me. And so she had to help me kind of work through that and um, calm my body down. And it was really really interesting that the word enjoy would cause such a trigger inside of me. I had no idea, no idea. And over time, and I kept asking God, what is it with this word enjoy? Why is this such a, why was it such a um, challenge for me in that session? And so since then, I've just been recognizing patterns in my life where I felt inhibited from being able to truly enjoy who I really am the way that he's created me, who God is, that he smiles, that he has fun, that he wants to play, 
he's also serious, but I always saw him as serious. Always saw myself as serious. I'm highly thinking and highly feeling, but not able to really receive the enjoyment with Jesus, which was keeping me from enjoying my own life. So, um, when I started kind of testing on, I don't do this very much in person. I'm not as, um, I'm not quick. My son is incredibly quick witted. I mean, he says things that are funny before you even realize that he's responding to what you said. Like it's, it's so fast. I, that's not me, but when I'm on social media or I can type something out, um, just thinking of something that I think might be kind of funny is fun. And um, I don't try to be like a humorous person. That's obviously not my main goal, but I am allowing that. I'm letting go of a per, uh, past expectation that I couldn't do that because it's not the way for me as a, more of a teacher, or educator type of person, um, but still allowing that to be part of me because it actually is. And so um, cultivating life, including laughter and enjoyment, in um, sharing that on the page here is, uh, you know, including some of those memes. And we need that right now when we are inundated with all the news and inundated with personal stuff in our homes. I think of especially the people who are either working on the front lines right now and hardly have a chance to breathe, do anything but work. Those who are um, cooped up with people who are either dangerous to them, toxic in their relationship, or it's just such a heavy dynamic because there's so many people and um, extra things that need to be taken care of beyond even a virus. Um, we need some time to have that laughter, which helps soothe our brains and helps calm down our bodies as well. That fear and that anxiety is real. Excuse me. It is valid and it's, it's worth paying attention to. And it's also real and valid to still find ways to enjoy something in the midst of all this, to, to laugh at what seems crazy um, and wild. Um, you know, one time I remember um, we used to have a teen group at our house and the teens would show up uh, once a month and primarily it was um, reading through scripture. I think we went through John primarily, the book of John, and the teens would use scripture to interpret scripture and this, this group just grew. We left space for them to have fun and play afterwards, but a lot of times they wanted to just continue to engage in conversation. Well, one day my husband was cleaning out the shed and he had everything, we have a half acre yard, and he put everything out in the yard and so it was just full of stuff out of the shed because he was reorganizing and cleaning. I'm cleaning in the house, and so I go around our table to the two windowsills, the windows that are right by the kitchen table. And as I'm wiping the windowsill area, my hand goes into the ledge. I was like, what in the world? This wood is so soft. And so I looked in there, and I could see the larvae of termites. So I went and told him, I said, hey, honey, we have termites. And he comes in and he rips off the whole uh, windowsill and he's starting to tear apart things in the wall. I'm like, oh my gosh, we have all these kids coming over. So I do what I can do. And I grab the vacuum and I start vacuuming the carpet. And we have a Kirby vacuum. It's a high-end vacuum, right? Or it was in the day, back in the day. And I'm just vacuuming, straight vacuum over regular carpet. It's been vacuumed how many times before? And literally right in front of my eyes, springs pop off, the wheels fall off, and it completely just falls apart in front of me. I was like, you know, immediately, oh my gosh, I can't get the carpet done. We have another thing that's broken, but then, oh my word, what do you do? Sometimes when you can't do anything, it's, it is kind of comical. Um, so anyway, I just share that story to um, maybe give you permission to laugh in the middle of crisis. I talk a lot about giving permission to feel the sadness and the anger and to express the honesty of our emotions and our thoughts with God, which is super important. And it's one of the powerful things about using the Unleash Sheets tool. I'm also saying today, allow yourself that time for laughter and enjoyment and just a break from other things. Step away, enjoy God's creation. Look at the world around you, where you can, where they're letting you outside. I know in some places that you can barely even get outside, but um, a lot of us still can. And we can just remember this world is 
so much bigger than us and God is so much bigger than the world or us and sometimes we need to just step back of everything that's focused on um, kind of coming in against us and remember that God is so big and he has good things for us too. If you have something fun or funny that you'd like to share, I would love to hear it. Um, if this has encouraged you in any, way, in any way, let me know. And I am considering doing um, some more group chats. It was really fun getting to see new faces and hearing from people in the Cultivated Life community. So if you're interested in that, just uh, let me know in the comments below as well. Take care, friends.